Hi everyone, this is Mike at Brash Monkey, and this tutorial is going to show you how to use Spryder's new Color Palette feature, which allows you to manipulate the color data of indexed color images on the fly to change the visual appearance uh, of any color aspect of the artwork that you're animating. And to explain this new feature, I'll be using the Essentials version of our new RPG Heroes Art Pack. But once you understand how to use this feature, you'll be able to use it to create your own art and animations in Spryder that use the same color changing functionality. But even though this art pack offers a large range of colors to choose from, it's always possible while you're customizing your character that you'll find a need for something that does not yet exist. So let's say for example, I choose this color for the clothes, but I want something even lighter and more muted. How can I get that? The first thing we're going to do is pay attention to the subfolder name, which is clothing base, and the file name, which is clothing base underscore 17. And the next thing you're going to need is a program that lets you edit indexed color images. And the program that I highly recommend and have been using for over a decade is ProMotion. And as luck would have it, they have an excellent free version you can get from Cosmigo.com. Once you go to Cosmigo.com, click on this icon to the right. You'll be on the ProMotion page, and then you'll want to go to Downloads and download uh, from Cosmigo.com. Once you have that downloaded and installed, you can go ahead and open that up. And you'll see something like this, and you'll be ready to drag in your image. So we just need to go into the folder, the Palettes folder, and then find that Clothing Base folder, and then Clothing Base underscore 17. So I have two options. I could change that one directly, but then I won't have access to the original version. Or I can just copy and paste that. And then to stay organized, I'll rename something. I'll rename this to something that will be easy to find and will make sense to me. So we'll call it 17 later. There we go. So now I'm going to take that image and drag it into ProMotion. And then to make things more organized, I'm going to go into Options, Windows, Arrange Windows. There you go, that's better. Uh, and as you can see, we have the image itself. And then we have the actual, this is called the color palette of the image. And one thing that's really important to understand is that indexed color images were the image format that is used heavily for classic arcade and console games and uh, what's typically known as pixel art. And that differs from modern high res, high color images uh, in that indexed color, what that means is you have a very limited and very specific set of colors for your image to be created from. Each pixel of your image, each of these little blocks, can use one of these colors. But what's interesting, unlike uh, full color images where every pixel can be its own unique color, the data format of the image does not store the RGB, which is red, green, and blue value, which is the color value of each pixel. It just saves color values for these palette indices, or the, each of these blocks of color here in the palette. And then instead of referring to a whole color value, the file says that each pixel uses a color from the palette. So what's interesting about this is that means if I take one of the colors, I'll go into the palette editor here to control the RGB of each color index. And let's take this lighter color here, which you can see here, and there are several pixels in the image that are this color. But if I change the color here in the color palette, what you'll see is it instantaneously changes for every pixel in the image that uses that particular color. When you're editing your color palette, it's really important that you're using a program that um, understands or protects the order of the colors in your color palette. So make sure you're using a program dedicated to pixel art and indexed color images because some other programs might allow you to edit and save the image but then it might completely destroy or rearrange your color palette and then you'll end up with a very strange looking uh, rainbow colored 
characters when you try to use it in your uh, Spriter file. Luckily, ProMotion is not going to give us any of those problems, and it makes it very easy to quickly edit your color palettes for your files. So what I can do, because I know I know I want all of this to be brighter, is to go into this little tab here, and now um, I'm going to choose this little icon here, and that allows me to select a linear range. So now I can left click and drag here, and you'll see this line go through this range of colors, which is the entire set of colors for the clothing. And then I'm going to slide this B. This is H for hue, S for saturation. Saturation is how vivid the color is. Hue is for what type of color it is. And B is for brightness. And I can just drag up that brightness and lighten everything. And then when it's as light as I want it to be, I can click on this little green uh, check mark here. But before I do that, I'm going to also try increasing the contrast so that my darker colors stay a little bit darker. And this is just going to help me quickly get closer to where I need to be for the general value of each color. So now I'm going to click OK, but now I'm going to hand edit some of these indices. These three definitely stayed too vivid, too, um, too much saturation. So I'm going to go back here again. I'm going to select only these three, and then I'm going to bring down the saturation because I want it light and pale, that's better. And I make sure I click this green check mark before bringing my mouse outside of the palette area. Bring this all the way up to almost pure white. And then this color has too much saturation again. I'm just gonna play with these. And I think I'm going to darken these colors a little bit just so the uh, character doesn't look a little too, too much like it's emitting its own light like a light bulb. So we'll just increase the range a bit. But the, um, the first two colors especially are very vivid and we're going to save that. And now we can go back into Spriter and click here to reload the images. And I might have to, let's click OK on this and then reopen the palette set and then we'll go back into the clothing base folder. And now you'll see clothing base lighter is there. So I'm gonna click that and now we have a much brighter, lighter version of that color. Just to cover some of the technical aspects to make sure you know what's going on, make sure that you're saving your image when you choose file choose save image or if you need to for some reason make sure for instance if you choose save image as to save it under a new name make sure you're saving saving the image under png portable graphics uh, indexed that's the really important part indexed not 24-bit which you'll see here uh, png portable network true 24 32-bit that you do not want because that will be the image type that does not have the uh, color palette of indices. So you want to make sure it's indexed. So make sure it's set to that and then you can save it under any name you'd like. And then the other thing you can do just to be sure is to go into File, Preferences, then you'll get this dialog. And if you go under Project Defaults, you'll see that there is in the general tab an area with a checkbox for save BMP, PNG, ICO, GIF with minimal color depth. Make sure that is not selected. If it were selected, what it would do is rearrange your color palettes so all of the colors are as close together as possible so that it can eliminate the data for all of the remaining color boxes and this would cause the uh, problem I was mentioning before. So that's how you can create custom color sections for this particular art pack. But as I was mentioning, you can use this very same methodology to create your own art or art packs that put use to the same 
feature and I'm going to explain how to do that. Of course the first thing you're going to need if you want to create indexed color images that can use this uh, this feature in Spryder is a program that allows you to create and edit indexed color images and again ProMotion is is fantastic not only for editing the palettes of such images but for editing um, index color images themselves. As you can see, for example, I can pick any color from the palette and add whatever details I want. Of course, I wouldn't want to bother changing the details of this file because it's simply used in Spryder as a, a color table or color palette to um, adjust all of the other actually used images to use these new colors. What I would want to do is edit the actual images that are used in my art pack. We'll go into the mail, uh, mail folder, for example, and we'll say head. These are the images used to create the head on the different angles for the walking animation. So for example, if I wanted to edit this image, I could drag it into ProMotion. And as you can see, I can add any detail. Like in the case of our art pack, the eyes are created on a separate layer so they can be interchanged. But if you didn't need that and you just wanted to create the eyes on um, directly into the image, then you could certainly do that like so. So I'm not going to try to make something pretty. I'm just showing you in general how that works. But the thing you have to be really careful about when creating your artwork is to make sure all of your images that you want Spryder to be able to adjust colors for to be using the same exact palette. So the tricky thing about that is you want to create your palette ahead of time and designate these ranges of color that you're going to use for very specific things. For example, in the palette I set up for the RPG pack, the first color is what we call programmer pink. It's what represents the transparency. So that's the first index. And then the second three are white, gray, and black. And these stay the same in all images. Uh, these three colors are never changed in the palette. And then we have these three colors, which are the eye colors. So I can only use these three colors for the colored part of the eye and I can safely use this black color for the pupil. Uh, and then this is the only color that I know for sure will, will definitely always stay white. So I only use that one index for white. And then these colors here are the skin color range. So when you create your palette, you make sure when, whenever you're drawing a body part for any of your characters, you always use these specific indices in your palette. And then these colors are for hair. And then these colors are for the base uh, or most used uh, portion of clothing and armor and so on and so forth. So just you make sure you really organize your palette ahead of time giving yourself a nice range of each sort of family of color you're going to be using for those specific things. So I recommend you usually give yourself like some colors that are never going to change across any sort of color variant for any of your characters and you organize those up front so they're easy to find. And then for all of the other colors that can be changed to change eye color, skin color, and so forth, you would just neatly arrange them and then you're gonna once you create your first image you always use that as a starting point to uh, to keep the palette exactly the same organized the same way with each family of color so to speak always in the same exact places in the palette and I'm going to just um, cheat here now that I've made one side of this particular face or at least the eye for it I can just grab it as a brush flip it and stamp it down on the other side to save time. Then I would just save out that image and make sure when you do, as I said before, that it's PNG indexed uh, and give it whatever name you want in whatever folder you want in what's going to be your Spryder project. And then what you need to do is make sure that in your folder structure for your Spryder project, 
within the same exact folder as your Spriter file, you're going to want a folder called underscore palettes, just like here. And this is where you're going to create, um, certainly give yourself subdirectories to stay as organized as you can. And then you're just going to create color variants like I showed before in ProMotion to give yourself a range of um, all the different variations of color that you're going to want to apply. And the tricky part is though, for this to work, and uh, you don't have to do, the, to do it exactly this way. The images can be any size you want, but I recommend. What I did was I created special 32 by 32 pixel images that represent each type of thing that you can change, such as skin color. Uh, and then you'll see this image, everything is that what we call programmer pink, which has to be exactly, let me go into the RGB uh, tab here, it has to be exactly 255.0.255 for the RGB value, or if you look down here, the hex value for the color is FF00FF. So all of these colors, except for the ones that you're changing, have to be what's known as programmer pink. But if you look, what's important to notice is that if you look at the position of these skin colors, they are exactly in the same spot as the skin colors here in the actual images that I'll be using in Spider to create my character. And make sure every other one is 255.0.255. This is how Spider knows not to apply or not to change any of these colors when the user clicks on this particular palette. It'll only change these colors that are not 255.0.255. And once you have the underscore palette folder in your Spriter uh, project all set up with all of your subfolders of palette variation images, then you'll end up with this functionality in Spriter, uh, which is a really awesome way to allow users to customize their character before exporting sprite sheets and individual images. And that's it for this tutorial. Thanks a lot for watching.